Hello everybody, welcome to a new tutorial from sound for more it's Leo speaking. Today I'm going to explain the suggest mode inside Scalar 2. Before I start, I would like to um, remind my viewers to subscribe as it helps with growing the channel. Thank you very much. So we are inside the UM, we have an audio channel and we have already loaded Scalar 2. Okay, let's open the app and maximize it. Now we have seen how to select uh, uh, chords from scale. For example, if you click on scale, we have the C major scale. Let's click on it and let's drag a chord like C major directly into the progression builder in section C. Now, as we have seen in the previous tutorial, we can continue like that, select the different scales and dragging and dropping additional chords. However, sometimes what uh, uh, becomes uh, a little uh, more interesting is to have, for example, Scalar 2 to suggest what chords to add to your chord progression. So you have a button here which says suggest, click on it, and what happens is it opens up this window. Okay, so let's start to go through what happens. Here, in, it shows you a number of chords, and these are the chords which are suggested based on the selection down here, the chord that you selected, and the mode here. So let's start with selecting per scale, which means it will look at the chord selected, C major, the scale selected, therefore, which is C major scale, of course, and uh, it will um, suggest chords based on that scale because the mode is per scale. So in this case, you see an A minor, which fits inside the C major scale or for example, an E minor. Okay, really nice. Now, let's click on auto detect here, and this function will uh, auto detect what you have in the chord progression, and it will copy it up here as well in the detect section, in the A section. If you close these, we are still in the C major scale. Now, let's get rid of that C major chord. Just click on shift, then on the C major chord, and then remove the chord. Now we are left with A minor and E minor. If I go back to the suggest mode and I select on A minor, and you can see by the way, that the chord which is selected is this border in orange. So the further detection will be based on that chord, but you can go and select also A minor and you select the up here in this corner where you see that suggestion text and it will refresh, of course, the um, suggested code. And the one and the code which has not been selected will become available for suggestion, okay? So you can see additional codes here. And if we click um, Auto Detect and close that, you see now that the detected scale has changed to A minor scale because you have an A minor and the any e minor chords only. Let's go back to the suggestion mode. Now let's change that to tonal and let's ensure that we are on the A minor chord. Now you can see different chords which are suggested, they are not all blue, which means that the one which are not in blue are not part of the scale. Indeed, for example, if you scroll up um, right on the right side, you find the chords like D major, which has a C, uh, an F sharp. So let's try and see how that sounds like. That sounds nice, right? So I can drag and drop that chord uh, here. Now. So tonal mode will suggest chords which are not part of your scale and it will go through chord sets in the songs mode and the artist mode and propose chords which will fit well or could fit well with your chord progression. Okay, so now let's click again on auto detect and let's close that window and you see the scale detect is changed to A Doria mode and if you play that you have that F sharp, which has contributed to go to that Dorian mode. Okay, so let's go back to suggest mode and let's select again the A minor chord. Okay, but you could select other chords as well. And of course the suggested chord will change. Now, and you could, let's go back to actually per scale. You can also have a, a scalar two to minimize the movement in this case, it minimizes the movement between the different chords using, for example, inversion. Okay, so and that can become handy, of course. But um, there is also another option here where it says pattern. So what you can do is if you click on pattern, you can say fill in all the missing chords here in the pattern. So let's click fill. And you can see it has selected chords which are part of that scale, of course, because the mode is per scale. Let's click play. A 
And remember, you can still uh, click on shift button, select on one code and remove that as well if you don't like that. Or you can also select the multiple codes, click and drag outside inside the codes like so. And you can also remove them in, um, in groups like so. It will say remove free because you have free selected, okay? So you can click on that and we'll remove them. Okay, now select that code, uh, that A minor code again, as an example, go to pattern, and instead of selecting fill, select replace. In that case, it will replace the entire set of codes. Interesting again, let's listen to what it has produced. That's really nice, actually. I like that. So as you can see, you can use the suggest mode to generate very interesting code progression based on the scale that you have selected or detected or based on that tonal mode which uh, help you to uh, generate different ideas outside the scale remember when you have done you can save your work here okay you can give it a name replace if there is something existing you can save your full session or the individual patterns and uh, code sets Okay, and let's click um, cancel on that. Something else as well that you can do, and I'm, go I'm going to mention it uh, as an introduction, you can capture the uh, MIDI. So what you do, you click here where it says MIDI capture, and as you can see, I already captured one. You say start new MIDI capture, and you can see here a button which says stop. Now you play that code progression like so. Okay, click stop, and you can see we have a new MIDI capture there. You can play it. Sorry, that is the previous one, this one. You can edit the name, you can share it further, save it, for example, on your device, and then load it up or import it into another application, or you can delete it. And of course, you can start to a new MIDI capture. So it's a nice, interesting uh, way to export effectively MIDI files into other applications, like, for example, Yordo. Okay, right. I'm going to stop here. I hope you enjoyed and found the tutorial useful. And as always, see you next time. Bye.